I'm Christine Leadbetter. I'm here today with Dr. Paramjeet Singh, who is an assistant clinical professor in the Faculty of Health Sciences at McMaster University, a mindfulness expert, and an instructor in DeGroote's Executive Education uh, program. Thanks so much for being here with me today. Thank you, Christine. So uh, mindfulness, let's unpack that. You talk a lot about the mindful leader. Um, so what is mindfulness? So, so mindfulness is a mental capacity to be present to be present okay. to whatever is happening in this moment. A and there's a very systematic way of training your brain to be, because most likely our brain is not attuned to be present. It's always pulled in by what has happened in the past or what is happening or going to happen in the future. So, so mindfulness is a very specific way of training your mind so you can focus it in what is happening in this moment and enjoy or, or, or go through the experience of the moment. And, and the, there's usually three-step process. That's a loosely three-step process. You pay attention, you don't react, and you consider everything is temporary. Interesting. So mindfulness, again, it's kind of going off meditation practices. Um, a, lot of, a lot of us have challenges with meditation to keep ourselves focused and keep your mind clear. Do you have some tips? Um, I, I, yes, I, I think I think most of the one of the things that we turn people off when we talk about meditation and people often associate with some religious practice, some some stuff you have to do, uh, which may not people may, might not be comfortable with. But meditation is simply a very, very systematic way of training your mind whichever way you want to train it. So, so, so we pick an object in mm -hmm. the context of the mindfulness and we keep on bringing our attention back to it. It doesn't matter what the object is. So within the context of the practice, you can pick an object like your breath, which is always there, mm -hmm. which is always happening in the present moment. So if you want to be present, you come back to the breath. You don't have to do anything else. So keep on coming back to the breath, trains our brain to be more present focused. And when we are present focused, at that moment, for that moment, we are actually away from those two dimensions of the time where most of our problems lies, the past and the future. And sometime, if we can actually focus that way, it gives us a moment for the body and the mind and the brain to actually reboot itself. And that can be literally lifesaver in certain circumstances. So for example, somebody is having a stress response, which is huge and could translate into massive problems within the body. If they can actually short circuit that stress response by being aware of it or intervening it, that leaves them or, or, or saves them from actually getting into the toxic environment of stress translation. Absolutely, and you, so you do a lot of um, work in this space and looking at the scientific research behind mindfulness and meditation practices. So kind of going on that, what are some of the impacts folks can expect to feel when practicing mindfulness? Like why is this so important to incorporate into our lives? So, 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 so quite a bit of circuits in the brains actually come into play when you do this very simple act of coming back to the present moment. Mm -hmm. And that could be your breath, that could be your body, that could be the food you're eating, that could be the conversation. And this is where the leadership stuff's come in because you know, a large part of the conversation or the responsibility of the leader is to be present. When you're present, you can actually pay attention to what is being said in that moment. So, so coming back to the neuroscience, the, the areas related to the stress response, emotional reactivity, emotional regulation, self-referential self processing, the way your own relationship with yourself, your ability to put yourself into the shoes of other people, what mm -hmm. we call perspective taking, all those areas within a very short period of time actually starts to change for better. We know from research that functionally it changes a lot sooner than architecturally, which means that a part of the brain which actually mediate those responses, they start to change within eight weeks. Those are MRI studies available now. Wow. You know? so, so just spending maybe half an hour a day for eight weeks, which is a very less investment, and you can literally tinker with the architecture of the brain, and, and you, you make it possible to work in a way so that you are not that stressed. Just for example, one part of the brain which, is, which actually really freaks us out is the amygdala. Mm -hmm. And we know from studies that when people practice, that part of the brain starts to get smaller, smaller, and smaller, which means it doesn't have that much real estate to make you freak out every drop of the hat, everything that happens you don't go into the automatic mode. And that's phenomenal because, you know, within a short period of time, you can tinker with that part of the brain. And so your life outside remains the same. You still have the difficult job, you have the difficult conversations, all the things still remains the same. But the way you interact with those things have now changed because that part of the brain is actually functioning slightly less 
in a harried state. I think that's really interesting, especially because, you know, mindfulness and meditation is kind of like the buzzword and activity to do now. You're kind of demonstrating the neuroscience behind it. So why else should people care about uh, integrating this practice into their lives? What, how is this going to affect them, uh, either as a leader or in the professional or personal life? Because uh, I think we are the constant in everything we do. So, so the kind of person I am, the way my brain functions, the way my mind functions, is going to translate or bleed into everything. It bleeds into my social interactions, it bleeds into my professional obligations, it bleeds into my personal life. So if I change some parts of me, then automatic, automatically everything I do changes itself. I don't have to do too many things. So that's why your relationship to everything you do actually changes. So for a leadership person, you know, for example, you are in a leadership position, and if people see you are calm, composed, you are not reactive, you don't freak out at the drop of the hat, mm -hmm. that's going to set up a role, good role model for other people to follow. And they will most likely to see the, the, what person does so that he or she is like that. You know? So because leadership is largely as a kind of a role modeling situation, yeah. you know, and that's how the agenda is set, that's how the tone is set. So we know from research, and there's a bunch of scientists a couple of years published in the, in the area of business that people, if you look at the qualities of the leadership qualities we need for today, those qualities are creativity, innovation, we know and that's a tolerance to ambiguity or uncertainty mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we live in a very different kind of world now. Uh, their ability to actually tolerate stress and manage it, stress hardiness, their ability to quell anxiety, you know, to, to be calm and composed. And all these things are actually mindfulness does wonderfully. We now have a evidence, we have a scientific empirical evidence which suggests that this actually does help all those circuits in the brain. And there's another kind of evidence which has that this, these kind of techniques have been around for 5,000 years. And that's also other sort of evidence that it, it means it serves a usefulness which we, we can actually take into account when we're thinking about that. Very interesting, and I know you also speak to this in your course, The Mindful Leader at Executive Education. So if we're thinking about starting a mindfulness practice, where would you direct us to? How would we get started, or is there specific tools or resources uh, you would share with us? Uh, I, I would say that actually find someone who does this stuff, the person who actually practices, not the one who teaches. Because, you know, one of the things I often, because mindfulness is a buzzword, it's very trendy, mm -hmm. and one dark side of that is that it seems like it's being portrayed as an intellectual skill. You know, for example, I, does, I do this kind of program in a variety of situations, community program, corporate program, and often Actually, the question that keep on coming is that uh, I don't need to practice. I don't need to actually do a formal practice. I can just remind myself to be present. And that's a, that's a fair assumption, but, but really that's not how the brain functions. As long as you have a moment to react, you are more likely to actually not react. So you have but to the, do the work. Yeah, you have to do the work. But, the, but when the rubber hits the road, the, our brain actually goes in automatic mode. And that's when we need to be mm. mindful. Mm. When somebody is shouting at you, when your boss is being difficult, or all sort of bad things are happening, if you can hold your strings in that moment, then it is going to help you. Otherwise, it's no... It, it's not very useful to be mindful unless everything is going great, you know, because you have a moment to not react. You can think that, okay, I don't have to because it doesn't have a downside. So you're but learning those behaviors so that they come naturally as opposed to just understanding the concepts. Exactly. So, so when you start to practice, you start to come across with your, come face to face with your own mind, how it functions, and then you start to change it. And then because you're changing your mind and you're changing your brain, when the rubber hits the road, when the next challenge comes around, now you have changed the default way the brain functions, mm -hmm. it will automatically take on. So if the brain is reactive, and that's the default of it, when the rubber is going to hit the road, it is automatically going to go into the role. But if you change it by practice, then the new default will come in and step in automatically when you ran into challenge. And that's why I tend to think that practice is very important. Intellectual understanding is wonderful because mm -hmm. it, it offers us a framework, but it's just like uh, I often say that practice is like building up the foundation. Scaffolding is wonderful, 
but without foundation, nothing else happens. If we have a shaky foundation, nothing else can be built on. So formal practice is very important in that context. No, I, and I appreciate what you're saying. It's definitely a good reminder for all of us that you actually have to do the work in order to gain the benefits from mindfulness practices. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah.